Andreas, if we want to really discern what everything is, we have to look at the most fundamental things we have in the world and ask what they are. Not just assume that we know it because we're always in it. And the first thing that comes up is time. What is time? What is time? Well, actually, everybody knows what time is. And it turns out that what everybody knows is the deepest sense we understand it as physicists as well. What is time? Well, I, I, I was supposed to meet you at 6.30. Um, how, did I, how did I do that? How did I show up at 6.30? Well, I have a thing. It's a clock, it's a watch, whatever. It's my cell phone. And I relate myself. I check it and ask what time is it. I, it's just a physical object. It tells me the time. And then, okay, about, about 6.30, I made my way up here. And you were checking the time to see, well, it's about time. Better, better get ready for Albrecht. And that's how we do it. We do it all the time. So, so we take part of the physical world, single it out as the thing we compare ourselves to, and our, our relationship to that thing tells us about time. It has lots of nice properties. You, you better choose a good clock. If, if, if I, instead of, instead of my cell phone had a little hamster running in a wheel, it wouldn't be very good, wouldn't be very good clock. So we have our standards, but at the end of the day, we choose pieces of the physical world and reference them when we talk about the passage of time. So is there something deeply fundamental about this? I mean, you're talking in very common terms about things that we do. Can we generalize from that and, and reach down into some fundamental understanding of time? So the, the story of, about this very practical definition of time is an interesting one, because when you start taking physics in college and grad school, that's not the time you know. The time is some abstract parameter in your equation. If you, if you study Newton's laws, time is this thing that, that you take derivatives with respect to to get time evolution. If you study the Schrodinger equation, same thing. Time is out there. It's called an external parameter, the independent parameter in your equation of motion. So time, the time we know since, since we learned to tell time on a clock seems to disappear when you study physics until you get to general relativity, especially when you get to quantum cosmology, where the essence of relativity is that there is no absolute time, there is no absolute space, everything is relative, mm -hmm. and you find when you, when you try to discuss time in the context of the universe, you have to go back to the simple idea that you isolate part of the universe and call it your clock, and time evolution only is about the relationship between some parts of the universe and that thing you called your clock. So you come back. So 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 in, in, in by the, in the story of a physics student is that you you learn about external time, independent coordinate time, for many years, and then you get to quantum cosmology, and that story seems exotic. Wait, where's time? Where'd it go? All of a sudden, you have to pull it out of your physical system. But it's what we did all along. So there's something very deep about about that. But it's deep in its sort of humble, practical way. So if we had time, let's just trace it historically, with Newton being the key parameter that we take derivatives of to determine all the, the laws, and then though we have these two massive events in the 20th century, relativity and uh, quantum theory, and it seems like time in each of them is different. That's right, that's right. I mean, I mean opposed to each other, radically different. Right, although what, what we know is that we can reconcile that by returning to the roots of everyday, our everyday intuition about time. The equation of quantum cosmology is, is often known as the Wheeler-DeWitt equation. And, if we, I, and that's an equation that does not, does not allow an external time. So, so the time in, in, the, in the first blush seems to be an empty thing in that, in that equation. But then what you have to do is say, okay, well, I'm going to designate part of my physical system as the clock, and I'm going to look at correlations between that clock and the other stuff. And that's how I recover time, and that's how I can start writing equations, not the full Wheeler-DeWitt equation, but the, but the sub-equations I get when I look at the correlations. Okay, let's start a little bit earlier, because again, I, I'm with relativity in which time is now relative, so that shakes me up on time exactly, significantly. Exactly, that's right. Now, and, and, I, and then in parallel, we have quantum theory in which time is very critical to it in, in being, a, 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 a being fundamental. 
and you have to vary. So wh how, how, do, how, are we, how are we moving with both of these? What's happening? We're treating relativity at a quantum level before we have time. We, we use it as a theory, first of all, about assigning probabilities to states. And then to talk about time evolution, we have to identify the clock. And when we, once we've identified the clock, we can say, well, what are the probabilities when the clock says three? What are the probabilities when the clock okay. says four? And this gets back to the, the intuition. We yes. need a clock, just yeah, like we, we need, need a clock, clock to meet so, at 630. So it's old school, but, okay. but it's not something a physics student would recognize until they stop and think how they managed to get, to, to get out on that great date by, <laughs> by six o'clock. Right? All right, so, but what's the clock? So what's the clock? Exactly. So in simple equations we use to think about cosmology, it's, it's easy to come up with a clock. Maybe the clock is just the size of the universe. As the universe increases, time goes on, an expanding universe, it all fits together. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's the matter density, the density of the universe. The density decreases as the universe gets older. Maybe that's a good clock. So people fiddled around with this and found some good. What are the characteristics of a good clock? So a good clock doesn't repeat itself. So it's actually funny because if one thing we know about our clock on the wall is it repeats itself every 12 hours. So um, we need to combine that with a calendar <laughs> to get the whole story. And, 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 and so a good clock has, can keep a full, it's, it's different for every truly different moment in time. Right. It has to have some regularity. It has to have some regularity. We have to understand how it changes relative to the natural pace of evolution of the physical system. And that change has to be constant. That change has to be constant, right. So if we have those kinds of characteristics, then we can yeah, look for e external right. things in the world to make a good clock, which gets back to a, a, a clean definition of time that's our own intuition, but also is sophisticated enough to deal with general relativity exactly. and quantum theory? Exactly. And then, and then one of the remarkable facts about our universe as we know it is there's lots of good clocks. The, the, the things are so regular that you have a good clock, I have a good clock. It's not like there's a precious single clock that, that takes care of everything. Everyone's got good clocks, and they're not that great. You know, someday I'll lose my cell phone, so someday, someday the clock on the wall will get rusty or fall down and break. But there's so many good clocks around that that's not a problem. And we, we're, we're, we're well set up with clocks. And that's true with the universe itself as well as our physical that's things right. that and we have. And it's a property, it's, it's a really a quality of the laws of physics that time is such a solid, clear-cut thing. So many physical systems reflect the evolution of time in a nice, regular way. So it's a really nice thing. But there's a catch. And the catch is when you take the grand view of the universe, it turns out there's, there's all the clocks we know and love that reproduce and agree with each other. But there's lots of other ones too. And then and when you take a, a grand system that includes everything in the universe, it, I've shown a remarkable thing is that you can, you can get all the clocks we know and love, you can set it up just the way to describe the universe we know, and then I can go and find a totally different clock that tells the story of a totally different universe. A universe with different laws, a, different, a universe that's completely different in, in every respect. And all of those stories of you, so, so you can tell me, I'm imagining a universe where there's no electron, there's no neutrino, instead there's some other kinds of particles. Or maybe it's all scalar fields instead of vector and, 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 and Fermi fields. So, 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 we, so we have a totally different universe, and you tell me what it is. So I say, okay, tell me your story. Tell me what kind of universe you want. I can go back to my same wave function that I used to describe the universe we know and love, and I can find a different clock that tells your story instead of, instead of ours. And so the lesson we learn from trying to put time into quantum cosmology is that everything we see around us is an artifact of the clock we happen to use. And so all possible stories of the universe are actually built in to the same physical description. It's a very radical idea when I, when I first realized that, so that's something I showed in, in a paper about well, my first paper on this was about 20 years ago, and I, and I couldn't, couldn't bear it. <laughs> it. It just seemed to undermine everything. I mean, I went into physics to, to know the true fundamental laws. I didn't want them to be arbitrary. I didn't want them to be pulled out of a hat like that. Um, but then as I thought about it, I realized 
But if, if in, in that context, in the, in the picture of, of physical laws that exist, um, that are chosen, chosen randomly uh, out, of, out of this, if, if I could actually come up with sharp predictions, if there was a preference when you pulled them out of the hat for have one or the other, that was maybe more fundamental. Maybe that's the real, that's the best way to understand the laws of physics.